Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from Pocketnow.com. The Kyocera Echo is the first dual screen smartphone and it does some really cool stuff. If you're wondering exactly how the two screens work in tandem with one another, in this video we're going to talk all about that, so let's get to it. So this is probably going to be a long video because there's a lot to explain here, so stick with us and you'll understand exactly how Kyocera engineered this phone to work with two displays because it's pretty fascinating. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do right out of the gate here is run Quadrant to give you an idea of how fast uh, the device actually is. Now we are running in the single screen mode right now, we're going to jump into the got to force close here. We're going to jump into the uh, dual screen mode in just a minute, but first we're going to run Quadrant. I'll be back when this is done. Okay, and we're done here, so let's click yes and see our result. So not too good, actually. We're falling at around 754 in Quadrant, which is below the Galaxy S. Uh, the Kyocera Echo could definitely benefit from more horsepower. As you're going to see throughout this video, it tends to be a little bit slow. Overall, it's snappy, but it could definitely use uh, perhaps a dual-core processor or more RAM. So let's go back to the home screen and flip out the second display. So when, first of all, let's turn off the screen and see what happens when you flip out the second display when it's in standby. The screen turns on and goes out of uh, the unlock screen, which is great, saving you time so you don't have to unlock the display at all times. So right now we are in tablet mode and we can actually flip this into landscape, which might look a lot better. So the way to think about this is that there are three different ways that an app can run on both displays. Number one, in tablet mode. And in order to get that to work, we're going to give plenty of, exa of examples of exactly what that means, you need to get the tablet mode extension from the Android market, which I've already gone ahead and done. So the tablet mode will work in, for example, Twitter. Uh, so Twitter will scale to the 960 by 800 resolution pretty good actually. It looks just like it would look on a Galaxy Tab. Uh, the text is rendered at the operating system level, so that looks crisp and clear. Some graphics might look a little bit blurry, especially splash screens, but generally it's usable and it's really cool to be able to have uh, Twitter run on so many pixels. Yeah, the black border is annoying, but you get used to it. Another thing that's annoying is if you go into Portrait, Let's see if I can show you an example. See the word someone right there? Uh, the S-O-M is lower than the E-O-N-E -E on the right screen. And hopefully the camera can actually focus on that so you can see that. So the screens aren't perfectly lined up, and I'm not sure if that's an issue with this particular model or if all Kyocera Echoes are having that issue. Uh, but it's, it's kind of annoying that they don't line up, which is why you'll probably want to keep it in landscape mode. Now, there are a lot of other apps that do work very well in this tablet mode. Here's another example. Facebook will work quite well. It will scale to both screens perfectly. Let's go back. Another app that will work, of course, is Angry Birds. So we're going to go into Angry Birds, and you're going to see that it will let, let you take advantage of all of the pixels. There's the splash screen. It's not the clearest because it's not made for so many pixels, but let's let it load. Okay, here we are. Hit play. So Angry Birds across two displays. This is pretty cool, isn't it? So we can use the multi-touch here. We can flip back. Oh, it jumps to the other side, passes the black bar, and it works. It's Angry Birds, and it works quite well. And a lot of other apps work, too. So let's go to the Weather Channel. That's another app that will scale very well across both displays, giving you 960 by 800 pixels worth of screen information. So as you can see, apps are kind of slow to load in the most part, especially in tablet mode. But here we go, the Weather Channel in full screen glory, uh, really taking advantage of all of the pixels on the screen. If we go to the 10-day forecast, you can pretty much see the entire 10-day forecast without having to scroll very much. So really cool use of the pixels. So there are plenty of apps that work just fine in tablet mode. But then the second type of app that I want to talk about doesn't work in tablet mode. New York Times is a good example. So we're going to load that up, and sometimes that is slow to load. You can see all the fingerprints that are accumulating on the screen. And here's what the New York Times looks like in tablet mode. It just doesn't work. It kind of hovers in the center of the screen. You can use it just fine, but it's not taking advantage of all the screen space. Let's go back. Another app that doesn't work in the tablet mode is speedtest.net. So we're going to load that up, and you're going to see that it kind of hovers in the center a little bit better than uh, New York Times, but still, you get these thick black bars on the side. You're not really taking advantage of all of these pixels. 
So those are the first two kinds of applications, uh, how they behave on this device. Number one, ones that work just fine in tablet mode, like Twitter and many, many others, and the applications that don't work in tablet mode, like New York Times. Now, there is a, a third entirely different set of applications called simultask applications. These are the ones that can do some really cool stuff with two displays. The way you know a simultask application is that for example, the browser has those two dots in the bottom right corner. Contacts has the two dots. Email has the two dots. That lets you know that it's a simultask application. And Kyocera has made an S SDK available to developers if they want to make their application simultask ready. Our guess is that you're not going to see that many simultask ready applications because the Echo is one device. Uh, it's kind of experimental, and developers are probably not going to spend many hours making their app simultask capable if they don't know that there are going to be a lot of echoes sold out there. So let's talk about how this works. Email is a really good example of the simultask capability. So what we have here is the inbox list on the bottom, and on the top you get uh, an email preview. And it's, it works kind of like a tablet, like an iPad or whatnot. You tap on an, a message in the inbox, it will show up on the top. It works even cooler if you go into portrait. You get the inbox list on the left and the preview on the right. Now let's say you want to view the email on both screens. There's a button right here that says full. It will stretch it down so now you're using all the pixels to display just the email. Or if you want to go back into the previous view, you just click on full. So it works really well. And by the way, another cool feature, let's reply to this email. When you reply and you're in the two screen mode and you're doing something that requires text, you get this awesome huge full screen keyboard. Uh, and it's really comfortable. Your fingers rest nicely on the back of the hinge. You don't want to use it in portrait. The keyboard gets really small. And you can say, you know, um, this, kind of using it from a weird angle. This is a test. This is a swipe keyboard, of course. So you can draw letters with your finger. Hello, did I get that? Yes, and you get the point. So again, in portrait, it kind of gets weird. So now we have the text entry up here and the little swipe keyboard on the bottom. You definitely want to keep it in landscape mode. And even better, you can flip out the screen and lift it up, and you get sort of this HTC Touch Pro 2-like typing experience. Really cool. Let's go back to the home screen and talk about another simultask application. Probably the best example is the browser. So if we open up the browser, right now we've got Pocket Now stretching across both screens. That's pretty cool, but even cooler is if we press this button down here. Now we've got two web pages on two screens, and you can use them independently. You can't use them at the same time. You have to use one after the other, but you're not going to use two websites at the same time. If you go into Portrait, you get the same really cool effect. Two websites, two screens at the same time. Really awesome. And so let's go to Engadget on the bottom screen here. So let's see. There we go. And now it's going to load Engadget on the bottom screen. Here it is. Now, unfortunately, in the simultask applications, you can't use multi-touch. You can't use pinch to zoom. You can only double tap to zoom in. This is because the, and in this case, you don't need to zoom in. This is because the simultask menu is brought up with two taps of the finger. We're going to talk more about what exactly that does in a sec. But here we are on an Engadget post. We can't double tap or we can't you know, pinch to zoom, for example. And we're going to see that that's the case in other applications as well. Even if we go to the desktop view, because you might be thinking, well, maybe the, double, the pinch to zoom doesn't work because you're in the mobile view. But here we are in the desktop view. It doesn't work, but double tap to zoom in does. OK, so you saw that screen before. Two fingers on the screen will bring up the simultask menu if you get it right. And from here, what you can do is you can reverse the apps. So now Pocket Now is going to come on the bottom. Engadget is going to come on the top. Another thing you can do is just change the app on the screen. So we can say, let's have Gallery on the bottom and the web on the top. So now we have Gallery on the bottom and web at the top. Pretty cool, right? And what we're actually going to do is stretch Gallery to both screens, because Gallery does some really cool things with the simultask capability. So there's a button here that should allow us to scale gallery to both screens. Here we go. So now we get the gallery on the bottom and the image on the top. 
And I've only got one image here. And again, pinch to zoom doesn't work. You have to double tap to zoom in. So imagine having a library of pictures here on the bottom and being able to quickly kind of tap on them to see the images up here on the top. Really cool feature. Let's do the simul task again. This time we're going to jump into the phone application. By the way, before I continue, these are all of the simul task apps that are available. There are only seven of them. So we're going to go into the phone app. And the phone app uh, will work with two apps at one time. So imagine looking through your photo gallery while dial dialing your friend. Um, and unfortunately, in the dialer, we don't have quick dial. So if you want to dial Bob in quick dial, you do 262 two, because of the B and the O and the B. No such luck in the dialer. Let's go back to the home screen and open up another simultask app. We're going to cover all of them because they're really cool and pretty well done. Another one that's super cool is the, uh, the View Queue, which is basically a YouTube player made by Kyocera. And you can watch a video on the top screen while looking for new ones on the bottom. And one of the coolest parts about this is that you can take any of these videos, tap and hold, and if you get it right, and drag it into your queue. Isn't that awesome? So you can now, while you're watching a video, fill up your queue with other videos to play. And again, you get this hinge so you can kind of have a better viewing angle if you're looking at it on a tabletop. And we can simultask with this. So let's say we want to have, um, say, the browser on the top while the video on the bottom. And let's see what happens when we try to play. We can actually literally view a web page while a video is playing. Whether you would actually want to do this is, is, is really up to you, but the fact that you can do that is, is awesome. So there are a couple more apps that we have to talk about. Okay, so let's jump into Contacts. That's another simultask capable app. We do the double tap. We can have, let's say, uh, the browser on the bottom and then the, uh, you know, the, the Contacts at the top. And I think we're pretty much done with the simultask apps. And if you're on the home screen, you do a double tap, by the way. Uh, nothing's going to happen. Let's jump back into the browser, see if we missed any. We also have messaging, which basically basically looks the same um, as you would expect in uh, email. So we can stretch it across both screens, and we don't even have any text messages. But it would work the same. Again, there's a message index. And then if you tap on a message, it will show you the preview in another screen. Let's do the simultask again. And that is it. We've covered all of the simultask apps. These are the only ones that will work with this special functionality that will allow you to run one and then the other at the same time. Uh, hopefully, there will be more. Again, Kyocera has released an SDK uh, to make it possible for developers to take advantage of this functionality. But our guess is that the simultask apps you just saw are the only ones that are going to be available for the Echo for a while. So wrapping things up, just like you, we were wondering whether having two screens on a smartphone actually makes sense and if it has any merit. We can tell you that it does make sense and it does have merit. The, the idea of being able to look at two web pages side by side or to look at a web page while checking your email or watching a video while checking your email is awesome. Kyocera's execution of it definitely could have been better, but we certainly can be forgiving since this is a first generation product. Uh, we would love to have seen this with a faster processor. In fact, just a second ago, it froze on me. Uh, performance gets really bad when you start running two graphic intensive websites side by side. The design could have been a lot better. This is an, a very ugly device. It looks very first generation, almost prototype-ish. Uh, not to mention that it's thick and it's heavy. So the concept is awesome, a dual screen Android phone. We just have to say that Kyocera's execution of the concept probably wasn't the best. And we're really hoping that other companies, Samsung, Motorola, HTC, follow suit with this concept of a dual screen phone. But it's very likely that Kyocera has a lot of patents on this thing, uh, making it difficult for another company to enter the market and do something likewise. Coming up in the full review, we'll have full benchmark tests, remarks on battery life, because you're probably curious about that, plus other remarks on how this fares as a daily driver. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and thank you for watching. That's it for now.